Hello YouTube, it's the Carbine Cowboy coming to you again today from the great state of Montana. I have an, the M1 Carbine out here with me today, and I was going to do a little bit of talking about this little rifle for you. This little rifle is one of my fond favorites. This little gun is probably one of the most underestimated firearms of the 20th century. The little 30 carbine was invented back right before World War II, 1940. And what their purpose was is they wanted a replacement for the Colt 1911 A1 45 caliber pistol. The reason why they wanted a replacement was they wanted something to give to non-infantry personnel that was a little more accurate than the sidearm. This little cartridge was developed off the old 32 Winchester self-loading cartridge, which is now defunct and has been for a long time. But this thing gets a really bad rap because a lot of people don't understand really what this rifle was intended for. These things were issued to truck drivers, tankers, uh, signal corps, telephone linemen, artillerymen, machine gunners, that kind of thing. What it was intended for was to give them a little more accurate firepower and give them a little more range than what they would get out of a handgun. Now, with that being said, they did make a paratrooper model of this that had the collapsible wire stock. And from what I understand, a lot of the guys were like the M1 carbine because it was light. This rifle only weighs five and a half pounds. Uh, it was easier to top off. It had a 15 round magazine compared to the M1 Grand's eight round magazine. And it wasn't an overly cumbersome rifle. As you can tell, it's very, very short. This rifle is only three feet from the end of the back stock to the end of the barrel. Three feet, 36 inches, that's it. The round that it originally fired when developed was a 110 grain full metal jacket at 1,950 to one to, well, 2,000 feet a second, depending on which statistic you want to look at. Now, this rifle served quite well in World War II in Korea. Even with the bad rap that it got, this rifle was used in military service all the way up until the mid-1980s. I know the Israeli defense forces over there are still using the M1 carbine. There's the history lesson. Quite a history lesson there. Now, for modern day, today, does the M1 carbine serve a purpose? Yes, it does. This little rifle is a very accurate little rifle, and it's also more than capable of taking up to deer size game to 200 yards. I would not recommend hunting with this with the original military 110 grain full metal jacket. They do make 110 grain soft points made by Sierra, Spear, and Federal. I often use the 110 grain soft nose uh, with a fair degree of accuracy and I've taken quite a few Montana mule deer out to a couple of hundred yards with this thing and let me tell you it's quite devastating. I mean it makes a hole about the size of a pencil going in but it makes a hole about the size of a silver dollar coming out and that's no joke. The M1 carbine in my opinion is great for women and it's also great for gun enthusiasts. Yes, I will admit that a original World War II vintage unaltered M1 carbine are quite spendy. But what firearm today isn't spendy? Uh, I know people that are buying AR-15s, by the time they get done adding all the gear, gadgets, and goodies on them, they're up to $1,500, $2,000 in an AR rifle. Most of your standard bolt guns today made by Winchester, Browning, Remington, Kimber, Cooper Arms, they're all 
starting at about $800 and going up. Now, I grant you, you can buy firearms cheaper that are made by Savage, Stevens, Mossberg, nothing wrong with them, they're great rifles. But when people sit back and say the M1 carbine's getting kind of expensive, expensive compared to what? We all know that uh, the last 10 years, the price of firearms have really went up in price. But the thing I do like about the little M1 carbine is it's light, it's fast, it has more than enough accuracy and punch to do what it wants. You've seen me dispel the myth about the lack of the stopping power in two separate videos on the M1 carbine. One was entitled Myth or Fact of the M1 Carbine, and the other was Myth or Fact of the M1 Carbine Part 2, where I fired these rounds at 100 to 200 yards, the bullets completely penetrated. Old myths die hard, so please do not buy in to all of the myth. This rifle was made by Car Arms. I paid $799 for it back in 2013. And I have to admit, it was the best rifle that I have ever owned as far as a fun little rifle. Yes, you can tell I have the World War II era bayonet on it, but that's mostly for looks. It's uh, not so much that, uh, you know, you have to have the bayonet. I just do it more for looks. But the thing about it is, with a little two power scope on here or your standard M1 carbine sights, these things are more than adequate for doing what the average guy needs. The little 15 round magazines that this rifle carries, they are fantastic. I also have the 30 round magazines for it. And I hear a lot of people complaining about 30 round magazines hanging up and giving them all sorts of problems and whatever. Mine are all made by PMAG. I've never had a problem with them. The ones I have had problems with are the uh, Korean era vintage carbine magazines and that's only because the magazine springs in were about wore out. Other than that, if I had to give this rifle a grade, I would give it a good solid A. Check into car arms. Uh, they make a, stand, a, a, a really nice standard production M1 carbine. You can get it in this configuration or in the paratrooper configuration. You won't go wrong with them, I guarantee you. I guarantee that they're not for everybody, different strokes for different folks, but five and a half pound rifle does the job. And from the great state of Montana, the Carbine Cowboy, see you next time.